Hello and greetings from Iceland, but it's time to talk about Lake Askja again. But the land uplift since uh, August 2021 is uh, 40 cm in total, and uh, that's quite a lot. And if you compare it to the situation in Grindavík, the land uplift there is 4 cm in total, and the magma is at 4-5 km depth around there now. But the magma under Askja is at 2-3 km depth. But uh, that doesn't tell the whole story, of course, since uh, those are very different systems, indeed. Askja is this one of a kind volcano, and our experts believe that uh, 1.4 cubic kilometers of magma have been accumulating there, but will it lead to an eruption? And when? So let's first take a look at the past. Land uplift has been detected before, or in... Uh, 1967 and again in 1972, but not at this same speed as we see now, and uh, it didn't lead to an eruption back then. But this uh, rapid land uplift now is making our experts say that uh, we might be in for just about anything around there, and they recently warned us about the tourist traffic, but they will come soon, or when the road opens up again, but it's been closed since last September. And this uh, highland region is only accessible for a few months of the year by car, which uh, explains the lack of uh, footage I'm dealing with now. The lake itself was formed in 1875 when a powerful and uh, explosive eruption occurred, and it's also one of the deepest lakes in Iceland, or 220 meters deep. But we had very little idea about the landscape out there before the eruption. But a land surveyor back then did, however, describe a valley there, where the lake is now, but we don't get any closer to the old landscape than this. Then in 1785, almost 2.5 cubic kilometers of lava surged up from a land, and later on, the magma chamber ceiling began to subside, eventually stopping almost 250 meters below its normal level. And I'm very sure that uh, that's something that many of my viewers would have liked to witness through a webcam. What uh, used to be a valley then filled up with groundwater and Lake Askja was formed. Between uh, 1922 and 1929, several small eruptions occurred around the edge of the New Depression, and the last eruption occurred in 1961, but relatively small though. And uh, as I was browsing for information for this video, I came across a science report from 1992 in English, and uh, even if it was... Uh, Simple enough for me to understand, or most of it, I decided to leave a link to it, rather than to spend hours to water it down to a video script, with uh, out the footage that I need to make it into the kind of video that I really want to do. But I might do a longer version later on, or when I get the footage I need. But uh, back to the core of this situation. Askia eruptions can be fast and furious during rifting episodes, and there is already enough magma there for a strong show. At uh, any given time during summer, there can be hundreds of tourists around, but there is no infrastructure at risk uh, this time. But the 1875 eruption produced a lot of ice. The eruption triggered a wave of uh, emigration from Iceland to Canada and the USA, as uh, ice destroyed uh, farmlands in East Iceland, which got hit the worst. So it's all up to the winds how a similar eruption might affect us now. But uh, this was indeed a dark chapter in the history of Iceland. And uh, this explosion crater has its own story to tell, but the lake itself is of course the best witness about uh, how my island is uh, still in the making. So this might be a big uh, event coming up. And then we have the other ticking time bombs ready, like the volcano Katla, overdue and constantly shaking, and Hekla, constantly expanding, under Vatnajökull Glacier, we have the Grimsvötn volcano that could go off any time. And uh, just by, we have the Bárðarbungu hotspot, which is also shaky. And then we have the Reykjanes Peninsula, which will tease us for the next 200 years, according to our scientists. And the Tjörnes uh, fracture zone up north has enough tension to produce an earthquake up to magnitude 7. And uh, as uh, that is not enough, we see those uh, odd readings from the seismometers every now and then like by the Longyukötlu glacier, offshore west of the Snæfellsnes peninsula, 
and even the Ljósufjöll Volcanic System shows a sense of unrest or yet another system that we really didn't expect to make it to the news during our lifetime. But this is shot during my last photo tour as I was gathering footage from that little known system of ours but it covers a large area and I still need way more footage from there in order to show you the complete picture. So this is just a teaser to make up for the footage that I don't have from Askia this time. And I'm uh, using it now to save the day, since uh, it's so important for me to give you a good show while speaking about those things. And I really don't like it when I have to reuse footage or the very few Askia images I have. And there is just so much left for me to cover. And even if my drone has a fairly good camera, I would like to fly over the Askia region in a plane as well and uh, shoot from there with my Nikon DLSR since uh, I do have good lenses and uh, I get uh, excellent files to work with, better files than the drone provides me with. So it's uh, quite a task that awaits me, just here. And the same goes for all of the North Iceland uh, volcanic zone. But the good news is that the colors are popping here in the north and I don't have to drive for so long to get uh, stuck somewhere in nature by the plate boundaries. Always discovering something new about our nature. And uh, one of the things that fascinates me the most about Icelandic nature is the plate boundaries. But it opened up a whole new world for me to get a drone. And overall, I'm not that drawn to the parts of our nature that have been covered a million times on social media and such. As usual, I want to go my own ways. And to show you something different is always number one. And even though an Aska eruption is this remarkable event, it's just a small part of what's going on by the plate boundaries. So in case of an eruption in Askia in near future, we might be looking at an event that might cause major interruption when it comes to air traffic, it could damage farmlands, and our tourism industry could be in trouble for some time. But the highland location is however helping us with the limited risk when it comes to human casualties, and we should get plenty of warnings before an eruption and uh, it's very simple to evacuate this region but we have to bear in mind that it took mother earth 20 years to prepare for the Eyjafjallajökull eruption in 2010 and there are indications that the Askia volcano started to prepare for the next eruption after the rifting episode in the Krabla region where we had nine eruptions in total between 1975 and 1984. So now, when things are relatively calm around here, and since I have all the footage I need from the Reykjanes Peninsula, I will be going east every now and then to fly over the plate boundaries, and the first trip might be this weekend, starting in Húsavík, where we have this fort that runs through town, or footage that I really need to finish my video about the Tjörnes fracture zone. So it's plenty to come, and with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.